Here is a 2024 Toyota Corolla Sedan LE in celestial gray metallic with the cloth interior. The LE is the base trim out of the four trim options for the gas variant, and you have four more options when you go into the hybrid. The nice thing about Toyota is they basically mimic the same with features. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm going to explain the different features, some pros and cons, and what the biggest problem or issue is with the sedan, standard LED headlights and daytime runnings. The SE will give you LED accent lights and a sport mesh grill where here you're gonna have the horizontal bars because it's the LE, it's the base trim. All of the base options for Toyota have the same styling for the grill, 5.3 inches of clearance, so 0.2 inches more than the hatchback, and this is also 10.5 inches longer than the hatch at 182.5 inches. The same performance is underneath the hood with a 2.0 liter four cylinder producing 169 horsepower with 151 one pound-feet of torque paired to a CVT transmission. The hybrid will have an eCVT transmission. The LE will not receive any driving mode, but you have a B when you put it into gear for drive, lower it into B, and that's basically your sport mode. It will also help raise that RPM, so if you're going downhill and you want it to slow, it'll help slow down the vehicle. Standard 16-inch wheel covers. Add the LE convenience package and you'll get 16-inch alloy wheels with blind spot monitoring and the key fob will not be an actual key you'll have push button start add the le premium package now you're going to have a moonroof rear cross traffic alert and a qi wireless charging pad so adding these features on the base will still give you the great mpgs at 32 for the city and 41 for the highway and you're not breaking the bank account to go to the SE and getting 18 inch wheels will be gloss black. New for 2024, they have a nightshade edition. I would consider doing this because the whole roof line will get the gloss black. The side view mirrors, the rockers, the front's gonna have the glossed out grill and you'll have the gloss black for the spoiler lip, which makes the Corolla one of the sportiest sedans, comparing it against the new Civic or the Mazda 3. The LE will not have that dynamic Q, step it up to the SE, and it's gonna be more aggressive in the rear with dual exhaust, and you'll get the lower diffuser, standard LED tail lights. And another reason why you wanna option these packages is because the push button start will give that ability to unlock the trunk without using the key fob. So, Going into base trims and the comparable rivals, it's gonna be similar attributes, except you're getting a multi-link rear suspension and a McPherson strut front suspension. But the biggest problem that I see is when you're optioning the base trim with this key, if you have it in the car, meaning the car started up, you can't open the trunk at all. You have to turn off the vehicle in order to open the trunk with the key fob. And it'll go into 13.1 cubic feet of storage. You do have the option for the LE where you can get push button start, which will give you the quick trunk release. Split fold the rear bench at a 40-60 split from the back doors. It's gonna increase cargo, but you can see there's about a four inch lip. Let's go inside and start up this LE so you can hear that exhaust. The key fob we're gonna start off with because it has a key that you have to insert instead of the optional push button start. Four-way manual adjustment with a sport fabric interior, four-way manual adjustment for the passenger. The XSE will get the soft tech interior with eight-way power seat adjustment for the driver. The moonroof is an option when you go up to the LE premium package. Headroom and a leg room. Even if you go into the Corolla hatchback, it's going to be the same width because of the way the interior is laid out. Standard climate control will be on the LE with an eight inch touchscreen, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth 
audio. If you want to option the JBL sound system, it is optional on all trims except for the LE. Put it into reverse and we have a reverse camera. The lines will not move. Keeping a sporty style that will go into the air vents with the satin aluminum and it bulges out in the front with a more flat dashboard layout. Manual dimming rear view mirror going into an area that could have a wireless charging pad when you go into the LE premium package. Driving mode select we will not have. We have the B which will raise your RPMs. What's nice is you have the auto hold which you're not going to see that on a Honda. It's going to be soft where it needs to be. Opens up into a USB and a 12 volt. It's pretty deep storage pocket. Leather wrap steering wheel can be on that premium package for the LE. It's multi-function with adaptive cruise control and keep assist. 4.2 inch informational display that can go through exactly what I said, including Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which includes pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, full speed range, dynamic radar, cruise control lane departure alert, with steering assist, lane tracing assist, roadside assistant, automatic high beam, and proactive driving assist. And the dashboard and door panels configure the same way as the hatch. So a sporty style, it's gonna be more everyday material, software it needs to be, one touch up and down for all the windows, and a medium sized storage pocket with a couple of beverage holders carved out. For the back seat headroom and a leg room, there is no storage behind any of the front seats, USB ports, and an armrest with a cup holders in the center, which you don't get that on the base trim for the Civic. Door panel bulges out in the top, soft where it needs to be, a smaller storage pocket that's really designed for a large flask. The center is not going to be flat, so you'll have to pick your feet up. The rails are pushed back or forward enough. So it has a little bit more leg space than the hatchback. You will sit upwards a little bit on either the side. The center will sit up significantly higher in which you can see my head is hitting the headliner. 169 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque. We have it in B, let's see. Oh, she's just as fast as that Lexus ES350. Not really, but I would say it does a good job with keeping up. Maneuverability is good. The RPMs will stay high and you're always gonna have a German passing you on the side. It's gonna take me just the pros and cons right off the top. We're gonna start with the pros. You're getting a lot of safety features and you can option features in which you do not have to option an SE. I know I said the word option a lot, but that's because you got that with the LE in a Corolla. The next thing is that rear suspension, multi-link. So you can do some maneuverability as you saw. You were probably thinking, ah, oh, he's just thinking. No, I'm trying to show you what this vehicle is capable of doing in the review. Interior, because this is over 10 inches longer than the hatch, you'll have a little bit more leg room, but it's not a significant amount to say, uh, I don't want to go into the hatch. It does have more cargo in the hatch and it looks more sporty in the hatch. So I would say that's a con for this, but either way, I think they tick the box compared to Honda and Mazda or even Kia. Not going to be quiet. You're going to be hearing the drone note throughout. Even though you are low to the ground, you have a decent amount of clearance because anything over five inches is fine and visibility is good. The windows are very large, even though on the exterior, it may look more sleek. Safety is definitely the number one thing. Some cons to start off with is you do not get driving modes. You get the B in which you don't have paddle shifts. So you can't change the ratios. You can't do anything. The, the vehicle is driving itself. It's nice that they give you the B. It's just, you're not really engaged. You're just pushing the pedal and hearing the engine escalate. Some other disadvantages is you get the extra length, but you don't get the extra cargo. The LE doesn't have the styling as the SE in which I like that we got the features, 
but we can't get the same styling. When you want the Nightshade Edition, which is new for 2024, you have to go up the tier in which it will look more dynamic, but I feel it looks the most dynamic on the hatch. Same engine options, I would consider a GR Corolla because you're hitting 300 horsepower. It's a completely different engine, but a zero to 60 is insane. You're talking 4.99, it's a Corolla. Here, we're getting 5.2, I'm just joking. <laughs> Maybe when you wake up from a dream, you'll get that 5.2. But everyday use, it is good. So tick in the box for that for rural use. When you go into the interstate, it's going to bog down a little bit because these are smaller engines, even though it's just a touch over 3,000 pounds curb weight, it's still not enough to motivate this thing much more than around eight, nine seconds. Turn radius and we have it in the B because we need as much motivation as possible, even though there's nobody on the road. About two and a part lane, let's rock and roll. gonna just switch it into drive because this is more of a rural vehicle if you really want to get on it you need to go GR Corolla going against the competition interior is going to be a little bit more tight in this it's better than the Mazda 3 dynamically speaking it's great for suspension but the Mazda 3 is going to basically be the fast variant in this comparison the big problems or cons that I would say is you still get wheel covers and you have an actual key that goes into the ignition and you have to option push button start I like that when you do option that though it's not just getting the key fob where it's a push button, you're changing to alloy wheels. They do add features, even the blind spot monitoring. Or if you go up to the next LE convenience package, you'll get the QI wireless charger, a moonroof. I mean, they do take care of you with the features. It's just giving it as base. It's really feeling more like a rental car in which I'm fine with it there, or if I got a pre-owned that I just needed to get to work in and out quick because this sips fuel, I'm good with it as well. But then I would be considering maybe I should go hybrid because I'm getting the best MPGs. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Corolla Sedan LE for our car review.